um, I want to introduce for you guys Pamela Joyner, who is the the engine behind uh, Generations as a Possibility and Now as a Reality. And so, Pamela, if you'd like to say a few words. Chris, um, I uh, was able to sneak through and take a quick peek at the, peek at the exhibition this morning, uh, and it um, leaves me uncharacteristically speechless. The privilege of talking to the premier collector, Ms. Joyner. Was this a struggle for you to get these abstract paintings by African Americans in museums? Surprisingly, it hasn't been a huge struggle, and that's because uh, it was a struggle for the people who did this before me. Okay. So, you know, they say timing in life is everything, um, but I do speak often about uh, the curator, Lowry Sims, who really got me interested in collecting art and in collecting abstract art in particular. She was the first African American collector, um, I mean, uh, curator rather, um, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And while she's an upbeat human being, you have to believe that that was a monumental struggle uh, to be heard, to get this art uh, properly placed, acquired, shown. Uh, and so because of the sh struggle of curators like Lowry and Thelma, Golden and um, you know many you know art historians like Rick Powell and Kelly Jones. Um, this collection rests squarely on those shoulders, and so. But you must feel elated by this. I'm elated by this, uh, but I must say this: uh, the new generation of curators and Chris Bedford and Katie Siegel uh, embody all that is constructed, constructive about that generation of curators have been open to learning about and then subsequently writing about and promoting these narratives. So um, it's really been a symbiotic process. But these uh, pieces are extremely large. <laughs> wow, where My did you house does, I, We do house, we live with all of this art. Yeah. Yeah, and we hang it in our home. Now, no curator would ever hang it the way we hang them because, one, we open our home to lots of museum groups and, you know, um, you know lots of other collectors. Um, and so, because we have a home and not a private museum, we hang them where they fit. I mean, this does not, this is 18 feet or so long. Yes. It does not fit on a lot of walls. Right. But it, there are several walls that it does that fit on. you have in your home to and we, and we hang them. Um, and we, I mean, we hang them, and, and we hang them densely, and we let people in because we think it's important to show the work. Now, so for me, when I walk through this show, mm -hmm. it's a huge surprise because it looks so different, so much better. It's properly lit. There's one wall, one painting per wall, yes. and it's just remarkable. But you know, I just have to hang them differently. But but I'm okay with that. Right. Um, what are you trying to uh, impress about the African American when he sees this or she sees this? What are you trying to say? That there are no limits to the, your human possibility. Okay. Um, abstraction really, uh, I think, expresses freedom, the artists that make the work are asserting a sense of personal freedom, uh, and I think it's important that people feel as though they don't have to fit in one box or another. They can simply do where, they're imagine where their imaginations uh, take them uh, and where their skills take them. Well, uh, congratulations. <laughs> I feel elated as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, it's wonderful for me. of color, the movement. She imagines these figures, yes, and um, they are imagined in our life. Like these are the movement we can look at. Like, look at how these people are um, The gestures. There's a kind of intimacy. 